And here we go with the finals of the Adelaide TCG Regional Championships for 2016. On the left, we've got Matty Macefield playing Dragon Rayquaza. It's his fourth time on the channel. We've covered a couple of his games before. We've seen his deck in action. He beat Rob Spiller in top four playing Night March. Jordan Palmer on the right playing Seismitoid Bats. He beat Blake Whiteman in top four also playing Night March. Uh, so it's a very interesting matchup. There are definitely some things to factor in in this matchup, which we'll talk about in just a moment. Both players are from South Australia, so regardless, there's going to be a South Australian player winning the South Australian Regional Championships. Uh, these players both know each other very well and are both very good players. Uh, at this point in time, both players have earned their world's invite for the year. Uh, Jordan is doing incredibly well this season. Uh, so is Maddie. They're both playing fantastic games and doing really well uh, in this regionals series. Uh, so here we go. Maddie's going to start with the, the Dragon Rayquaza. Jordan starts with his Lone Zubat, which is not your preferred starter when playing Toad Bats. You're going to see the Spirit Link come down, a puzzle of time from Maddie. Probably expecting a Seismic Toad to come down, just playing those items that he's not going to be able to play in the future. And then pass his turn onto Jordan. We're going to see a Zubat from Jordan and anything else and just a pass. So it looks like that judge may have uh, done some damage to Jordan early on here. Uh, if he's not able to get anything going, you know, it could be a quick finish for him. Uh, he's only got four cards in hand, so we know one of them isn't a supporter, otherwise he would have played it last turn. Maddie's going to go for a birch here. He's going to flip heads as well and draw seven cards. There's a, two Rush Rams coming down, lining energy onto that Rayquaza. A puzzle of time once again. Once again, expecting a seismic toad to come down and just wants to get their puzzles gone. Uh, they become useless as soon as that uh, seismic toad starts using Quaking Punch. Uh, Rayquaza and a Shaman get played. You're going to see the Hydreigon coming down, means he can free retreat into that Rush Ram. We could also see a Turbo Blaze. And this is just the speed of this deck. It's incredible to watch. Definitely, probably my personal favorite deck I've seen all day at the Adelaide Regionals. Uh, it's a lot of fun to play against, a lot of fun to watch. You're going to see the VS Seeker for the Judge. Um, it'll be interesting to see if he actually plays that Judge, however, if Jordan isn't drawing into anything. There's going to be the Golbat 20 onto that uh, that Rayquaza. Seismic Toad, Double Colors, and we're going to see he start seeing a Quaking Punch. Coming down, uh, 30 damage. Uh, Matty might actually be able to draw out of this pretty easily. All he needs is a Mega Rayquaza and a Double dra Dragon Energy. And we're going to see another Burge's Observations. If he can flip heads, it's going to be quite easy for him to draw into those cards. We haven't seen either Double Dragon Energy or a Mega Ray seen, uh, hit the floor yet, hit the discard. So we know that they're definitely in there. Uh, there's an Ultra Ball, which doesn't help him. And I don't know if he actually drew into those cards. We're going to see double uh, fire energy. Yep. Retreats. And we could just see this attack for 130. I think it's Dragon Strike. A he flips a coin, which is Tails, meaning he can't use it next turn. Uh, so this is one other thing to factor into this matchup, is this Seismic 20 x doesn't really do all that much damage in comparison to Rayquaza, which is hitting for 130 and 300 damage. Uh, it also has an trait which negates 20 damage from water type Pokemon which Seismic Toad EX obviously is a water type Pokemon so that Quaking Punch instead of doing 30 damage is only doing 10 to the Mega without a tool card if he's able to get a Muscle Band it'll be doing the regular 30 uh, so that damage is not all that much we're gonna see a Double Dragon comes down on to that active Rayquaza and a Sycamore we could see the Mega Ray here we could see the knockout on this Seismic Toad EX and we are going to see that Mega Rayquaza and the Knockout. Uh, so Jordan needs to draw into something. Uh, if he's unable to draw into anything, it looks like he's not. He's going to retreat into that Zubat and pass. This game could almost be decided really easily if Jordan just doesn't draw into anything else. Maddie can also start to power up that bench Rayquaza EX. He does have that Shrine of Memories, meaning he can use the normal Rayquaza EX's attacks. You're going to see the Mega Turbo putting a Fire Energy onto that Mega Ray. So that one's also as well ready to go. We're going to see the attachment. So he actually, uh, what he did there was switched into the uh, Reshiram, Turbo Blaze, then retreated into the Mega Rayquaza, I believe. Uh, I was just burning some cards there. 
This is going to be the 130 onto the Zubat. Goes into the Golbat, and Jordan drew the Ultra Ball. And we're going to see the Shaman come down. So Jordan's not out of it yet. He's three prizes down this early on. He might be able to draw into something to allow him to come back. But that Mega Rayquaza is all set to start doing some more 300 damages. So, you know, even if Jordan does draw the Seismitoad here, it's going to get knocked out straight away, uh, which is unfortunate for him. Uh, we'll have to see if he can pull anything out. He does play Team Flagrant, which is going to be a huge card in this matchup. If he's able to hit a Team Flagrant, discard that Lightning off of that Rayquaza, it's going to require Maddie to play the Double Dragon Energies. And if he's not able to draw into one, which we are seeing here, Team Flagrant for that Lightning, if Maddie's not able to draw into a Double Dragon, Jordan might be safe to start using Quaking Punch. We're going to see another Shaman come down after that Seismitoad in the Double Colors, and he's going to be drawing a fresh hand of six. We're going to see another Train as well. If he's also able to get a Muscle Band here, he will be doing more damage than he would usually be doing with Quaking Punch. He's going to take the Sycamore, probably for next turn. Uh, he's debating going back through his deck. Uh, mm, yeah, it looks like he is. He's going to level ball for a Zubat here. Yeah, Zubat. Uh, it's pretty much the only target he would want to take. There's no point in taking a Golbat without having the Zubat down. Uh, so, Zubat to bench. He would like to get another bat down. He's going to retreat into that Seismitoad and hit for 10 damage with the Quaking Punch, which is something you don't see too often. And there's a Sycamore from Maddie. He's just going to dig for this Double Dragon Energy. If he hits it, he'll be in a good position. Uh, if not, then... Uh, you know, I still think he's in a better position than Jordan. He's still three prizes up, you know, so it's not too bad for him. And I actually feel like he may have missed it because he's not attaching it straight away. And Noia has not got it. He's going to attach to that Rayquaza on the bench. And a Mega and a Pass. So at least now he does have two Mega Pokemon set up. Jordan, if he's able to draw into some other cards here, could start to put some pressure on Matt. He starts to do some uh, some nice damage. We're going to see a Silent Toad with the double colors going down. Uh, it looks like he's debating using a VS Seeker or a Super Rod of some sort. Or No, he's just going for the Sycamore. So I think he did have a VS Seeker there. Debating whether it was right to take the Team Flag Run, discard more energy. Uh, I don't think it is right uh, because... Even then, Maddie still just requires the one energy. We're going to see the Super Scoop up. And he flips heads with that one. So he's going to be able to reuse these bats. 20 damage onto that active. Muscle Band onto the Seismitoad, which is really nice as well. Now he's going to start Quaking Punching for 30 damage. And we know he's got that Crobat in hand as well. So next turn, it can be a 60 damage onto that Mega Rayquaza. Uh, oh, there's the Double Dragon from Maddie. And an AZ on that Shaman. And he's going to play Shaman to draw two cards. And Maddie is now down at one prize. Uh, so it's going to be tough for Jordan from here. Uh, I personally don't see it uh, happening, but Jordan Palmer is a very good player. It shouldn't be underestimated at all. Um, I've played against him before, and he usually finds a way to get out of almost any circumstances. So we're going to see the Crowback come down here. Uh, looks like he's going to play a Super Rod. I think he has discarded that Crobat earlier, as well as a Water. He's also got that Seismitoad there. He might want to get some of that stuff back. Uh, those Water Energies are actually quite nice in here, uh, in this matchup. You need to be able to knock out these Dragon Rayquazas. Uh, sometimes it does hurt breaking your Quaking Punch lock uh, in order to use a Grenade Hammer, but sometimes it's necessary. We are going to see a Lysander here. Uh, it's going to bring up that Shaman EX, which is a really good call on Jordan's part. Because uh, Maddie's just accidentally put the fire in the wrong place, so they're going to fix that up. And uh, now he's put the spirit link in the wrong place. I really hope they fix that up. Um, we're going to see the quaking for 40. And he is, Jordan's fixing it up now. Uh, that's good. I was really hoping they would do that. Uh, just to uh, make sure all the Ray Quasar stuff is in the right place. Uh, it wasn't deliberate at all, just looked like accidental. Uh, so we are going to see the Quaking Punch for the shaman, on the Shaman, and why this is a good play is because Matty needs to devote the energies onto that Shaman to retreat it, and then he can't even hit for 300 uh, with the Bench Dragon Rayquaza, because he can't attach twice during his turn, he can't retreat into those Retro Rams to power it up, because Jordan got rid of the only Lightning Energy that Jordan pl uh, that Matty plays, uh, 
So there's just so many things that are not going Maddie's way this turn. Uh, Maddie just may as well wait out for the seismic to just knock out the shaman and then just bring up that dragon Rayquaza. And if he's got the energy, just hit from the knockout. We're going to see the bat damage coming down onto that mega Rayquaza. And there's the super rod. He's going to get back a Zubat, water, and a crowbat. He does have that Golbat down, so getting that Crowbat, uh, I think he just played the Golbat, I didn't quite catch that. Uh, so if he's able to get even even another Zubat here would be really nice for him. Uh, bad damage is so crucial in this matchup. There's a Super Scoop up, and uh, he would have liked to pick up that Crowbat there. Water comes down onto the Seismic Toad. And he's just going to Quaking Punch once again. Next time that chamber is going to be knocked out. And it had come down to four prizes versus one. And you'd have to think that Maddie might be able to find a way out of this. Uh, he's in such a better position than Jordan here. All it takes is one double dragon. I believe he's played two or three at this point. So, you know, his deck's quite thin. Uh, so he might be able to draw into him if he's lucky enough. He might even just this turn set himself up to make sure he does have that double dragon next turn. And he just actually passed. So Jordan is going to make a phone. I don't know if Jordan actually drew for turn there. I didn't see Jordan draw for turn. Uh, hopefully he did. Uh, regardless, he's going to play the judge. Which is actually a really good play here. Matty probably had a way of getting that double dragon in his hand. So being able to use that judge and just put him in a position where he doesn't have that, like the sycamore or something. And now he's going to quaking punch, knocking out that. Shaman EX in the active position. Maddie's going to promote the Reshiram here. And we're going to see probably the... He's got the Fire Energy. He could turbo plays. Alternatively, he could not. Because if uh, Jordan's able to light into the Hydreigon, he's going to need one more energy to retreat. Uh, so it's probably good for uh, Maddie to keep that energy in hand. Maddie's just going to count what's left in deck. How many cards are left in deck. We're going to see the VS Seeker here. And yeah, Jordan's going to take the Lysander on the Hydreigon. So it was a very smart play from Maddie to keep that energy. And we're going to see the Quaking Punch here for 40. Now, I'm not too sure what that Hydreigon's damage, uh, that Mega Rayquaza's damage is. It's really hard to tell. But I think it's within knockout range from a couple of bat drops. You're going to see the fire and the pass. He's left it into the active position here. You're going to see the AZ on that bat. We're going to see. 20 onto the oh it's going to knock out that mega rayquaza there's the water energy jordan pump has bought back the game uh from one prize card from maddie left and jordan takes a four prize turn to come back that is incredible uh the bad damage was able to knock out that mega rayquaza and then of course he drew the water energy i believe he had it in the prizes i think he drew it off the prize i'm not too sure though uh he was able to take four prizes knocking out that Hydreigon EX with the Grenade Hammer. If Maddie had retreated there, I don't think Jordan would have been able to pull that off. Uh, but that was incredible. Um, I've never seen anything like that happen before, especially to a big HP Pokemon like Mega Rayquaza, 230 HP. And Jordan was able to take four prize cards. Uh, that's a lot of damage he had to do to get to that point. And to come back from like Maddie being one prize out from winning this, that's incredible. Uh, so game two now, and uh, Maddie will... Presumably going to be going first, uh, hoping that Jordan doesn't have as good as doesn't have a good start once again. Uh, as you can see, this Toad Bat deck, when it is allowed to do stuff like that, it's incredible. It can do so much damage. Uh, those bats just help the Seismic Toad's already annoying, effective attack where you can't play items. It only does minimal amounts of damage. That's why the Jordan decided to play those bats with it. It just helps put that damage out there and get a lot of damage on the board which is something that Seismitoad has struggled with ever since Hypnotoxic Laser was rotated last season. So that just shows the power of Jordan's deck. Most people would assume that Maddie actually has the advantage in this matchup. 230 HP, Seismitoad isn't hitting for much, but just as we see there, Jordan is not a player to underestimate. He didn't scoop, uh, which is something that a lot of players in that position probably would have done, is just scoop that game there. Uh, when your opponent's got one prize left and you've still got six to take, uh, you know, most players would probably just scoop. Uh, but Jordan was able to bring it back, and it was incredible to watch. Uh, but here we go for game number two. And I believe Jordan Mulligan once, or is he still shuffling? I uh, wasn't paying too much attention. I think he was just still, still shuffling. Uh, Matty's got a couple of... Oh, no, he did Mulligan. 
Um, and he's got a couple of bench Pokemon here, presumably opening with that Reshiram, as we see there. He's got the Hydra Gun on the bench, he's got the Rayquaza, so he's definitely got a good start. And Jordan looks to have a much better start than last game. He's got that Seismitoad. You're going to see a Turbo Blaze, two Spirit Links coming down, and he's just burning those cards so he can Shaman. One of the good things about Maddie's deck against this Toad Bat deck is that he isn't overly reliant on having those Spirit Links down. As we saw in the last game, uh, sometimes it doesn't matter if you just have to use that, uh, th just the Mega Evolution. You don't, doesn't require you to have the Spirit Link. Uh, like Jordan's deck can be slow sometimes. It takes a turn for Bats to, you know, get fully set up. So sometimes you're just able to Mega Evolve and not worry about having the Spirit Link down. That's why he's able to put it onto that Hydreigon just to burn a card. So we are going to see a Sycamore from Maddie as well. Uh, he's in a pretty comfortable position at this point. Another Reshiram comes down. If he's got the Fire Energy, he can retreat. Uh, there's an Escape Rope. So he's going to go up into that Reshiram. Attach the Energy with a Turbo Blaze. I believe now he's going to see a Puzzle of Time. So I believe that's Maddie's second Puzzle of Time. As I said in the previous game, it doesn't matter too much. Just because uh, Seismic Toady X uh will lock his item so it's better for him to just play them now and that's why he's also going to get rid of that tool just in case jordan was able to hit a judge and you know put that tool card back into maddie's deck he doesn't want to draw into it especially when he's really needing to draw into these double dragon energies or something jordan also just threw the dice off the table but here's the super scoop up and he flips heads we're going to see the zubat come down the seismic turn into the active muscle band It's like he's debating an Ultra Ball here, which will probably take a Shaman. He's going to get rid of the Judge and the Super Rod. And he's going to take that Shaman. So we'll be drawing, I think, five or four cards from this. Probably just really looking to hit some more bats here. Uh, there's a Faded Town. Oh, Faded Town is a massive card in this matchup. I didn't even consider that. I forgot that uh, Jordan actually played this Faded Town. Uh, this means that the Mega Rayquaza, in between the bat damage, in between the Quaking Punches, he's also going to be taking 20 every single turn. Uh, and we also just saw an Enhanced Hammer from that Double Dragon, which is another big play from Jordan. Uh, it just seems like he's definitely got some really good cards for this matchup. Uh, that is why I said it's, uh, you know, while some people assume that Dragon Ray's got the advantage, it hits for 300, it negates 20 from these water Pokemon. Uh, when you play a consistent deck like Toe Bats, and you know, especially when you got Jordan Palmer playing the deck, uh, one of the better players of Australia, we're going to see the Seismito, Double Colors, and a Sycamore. It seems like this game he's really got everything he needs, and whereas Maddie is the one struggling to find something here. It looks like that Reshiram is on its last legs as well. There's a knockout on that Reshiram. Up comes that other Reshiram. Maddie once again just passes. Gonna see the water go down onto a seismitoad, preparing perhaps for a grenade hammer to knock out a shaman later in the game to take his final two prizes. Uh, that's something seismitoad does quite well. Gonna see the super scoop up. Probably gonna take the shaman if he hits this. Maybe just to reuse it. Maybe to stick him more away so it isn't a potential knockout uh, later in the game. But he's just gonna take the one card from that. And he was lucky enough to draw into an ultra ball, which he's gonna play straight away to get a goal bat. Twenty onto that dragon Rayquaza. If Jordan was able to hold on to that Faded Town for one more turn, that would have been really nice. Uh, obviously, he didn't know where Maddie was going to play the Mega. Uh, so, you know, it would have been doing another 20 here, and then there would have been another statement. It looks like Maddie just passed straight away, I believe. And it looks like Maddie's hand is just full of trainers and the Reshiram. And uh, Jordan's going to train as well. Uh, I don't think he got anything from that. I was more so paying attention to Maddie's hand than anything else there. We're going to see the Crobat come down. BS Seeker for a Sycamore, and here we go, drawing another 7 cards. He's also got that other Zubat there, that could evolve this turn. Faded Town, there we go. So Jordan does play 2 of those in his deck. Level Ball for the Golbat. Now, this is incredible, watching all this damage just come down into a deck that, you know, 230 HP, main attacker, it's tough to do, but just... So many cards that Jordan plays just helps get that damage out there. And here comes Manny promoting this Dragon Rayquaza. Reshiram down. 
Going to retreat into restroom room once again. Is he able to get a counter stadium at least? We're going to see the turbo blades and a pass. That's another 20 onto that mega. Uh, we could potentially see Jordan take another four prize turn here. Uh, what it would take is a way to get that active seismic toad out. It needs a water energy uh, and a lysander onto a shaman. He could grenade hammer and then potentially in between turns with Fader Town knock out that mega Rayquaza. That could be a play for Jordan to make, uh, possibly next turn. Uh, we'll have to see how it goes for him. And once again, Maddie's passing. And is Maddie scooping? Golbat damage. VS Seekers, the AZ. Zubat comes down. I thought Maddie was about to scoop there. This is going to be a Quaking Punch. And, and there we go, Matty scoops, he's just drawing into trainers, he isn't able to draw into anything, he's too far away to draw into anything that he could have used there. Dragon Rayquaza would have been knocked out in the time of, of that. Jordan Palmer is your South Australian Regional Champion after a thrilling first game comeback and a great second game by him. Uh, unfortunately for Matty, he wasn't able to draw into anything that he could use there. Uh, these two are good friends, showing some great sportsmanship there. Uh, what a fantastic series. Thank you for watching all of these South Australian Regional Championships. We'll be bringing you videos from the Melbourne Regional Championships shortly. Uh, we're still getting things finalised for that. Unfortunately, we're only able to record top eight games. Uh, so there's not going to be as much of that. But this has been really fun to do. I hope you guys have enjoyed it as much as I have. Uh, thank you for watching. And once again, congratulations to Jordan Palmer and also Manny Macefield for the second place. And every other player who participated. Thank you to the judges and to... Hobby Matrix for hosting the event. I've been Jordan, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.